It is time for Top Talkers. Joining us on the panel this morning, Melanie Allen from Bob. We've got John Brenner from CFRA and Michael O'Byrne joining us from CTV News uh, at noon. Great to have the panel with us. There's an interesting book coming out March 11th. It's called Women, Work, and the Will to Lead. And this has been written by Cheryl Sandberg, who is the, uh, the Chief Operating Officer at Facebook. She's also the mother of two, 43 years old. The premise of the book, just so that people understand what we're talking about. The title of the book comes from Sandberg's assertion, assertion that men will still rule the world, and there's a reason why. Women have the opportunities, but they are holding themselves back in thousands of small ways, even if they are thinking about having a family, taking the less challenging job, or declining the promotion for feel they won't be able to live up to it in the future. They are leaning back when they should be leaning in. What do you think about the concept behind the book, Melanie? <laughs> I think that she found a way to write a book that people are going to buy just because they think it's controversial. I don't think she's necessarily right, though. Um, yeah, some women are going to decide they want to raise a family instead of take a, a promotion. So I don't think that's a failure. I, I think that she's equating success to... to to jobs when, you know, I consider my mom a success because she took time off work to raise me. Interesting. John? That women don't want to rule the world by choice just goes to show they're the smartest. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Um, seriously, it's like, you know, knock myself out for what? Yeah. Are you kidding? I mean, I don't know. I, again, I, I think, you know, you can spin this so many ways and at the end of the day, I find that the most important things are what makes your heart light, what makes your mind free, and when the sun sets, you can go, you know what, I'm happy about what happened today. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's the way I see it. That's pretty deep. I think we'll just stop right there. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, I like my job, and I mm. like what I do, and I'm not in charge of anything. I'm no one's boss, and I never want to be, and I don't think that that's... that's Failure. I don't think that's me not stepping up and trying to do better. I like what I do, and that's what I want to do. I don't need to go any further. And, and I think that she's kind of like, I don't want to be the CEO of radio but or whatever. You know? There are certain women who do want mm -hmm. to be the CEO and the chief operating officer mm -hmm. and want to be in those situations and are s likely sacrificing other things. It's interesting because we had the, the CEO of um, Yahoo, I believe, who yeah. went on maternity leave. Yeah. She took two weeks off and was back at, at, back at work. Mm -hmm. There's another book that just came out, and this is in complete contrast because this was written by uh, Anna Marie Slaughter's Why Women Can't have it all. She's a professor at Princeton, uh, you know, and she pretty much left everything so that she could take care of mm -hmm. a family and children that were, whose lives were crumbling. Right. We all feel a certain responsibility. It's just where do you want to put yeah. it? Yeah, it's you know? a job who you are or what you do. Yeah. And you it, know, uh, I, I, I'm guessing for all of us, it's, it's what we do. It's not who we are. Mm -hmm. we're, we're a lot of other things. And if, if women choose not to uh, have these booming careers where they become CEOs, What's wrong with that? Yeah. You, know, you know, the women in this building are all really strong women that strive to do different things. They're mothers, they're daughters, they're incredible co-workers, they're, they're, they're journalists, they're radio hosts, they're all sorts of things. But the they're all strong women. Ever. Well, okay, but can I, can I say this? So say we have a, the, a news producer who's mm -hmm. looking to be the, the, the senior news producer mm -hmm. of, of our station. Right. They're, you know, two years into getting married and they know that they want to have a child within the next year. Does that come into play? Yes, I want the job, but I do realize that I'm, I would like to be on maternal leave. I would likely like to take this much time. These are things that we have to think about and have to ask ourselves before we even contemplate taking on other positions, whereas the men don't have to do that. That's true. You don't have to ever question it. And I think that's, that's a part of it is that we're, we're constantly having to question where our decision, decision is going to be mm -hmm. before it even happens. But, but I mean, here's the thing. If, if, you are, you have, if you feel you have to choose between becoming uh, the, the news director or having a kid, and you pick having a kid, I don't think that you failed. Like, I think that that's just as good, if not better, than becoming a news director because you're growing and raising a person, which is amazing. Yeah. Well, and you, so go ahead, John. Well, the other thing too is that, and, and I know it's a minor thing, but there's a biological issue that we have to deal with here, mm -hmm. okay? And that is, is that men don't have children. Men can raise children, absolutely. And if they choose to do so, that's fine. You want to switch, you know, if, if you want to switch traditional roles, and that happens. 
-hmm. It does happen. It's been happening for a long time. What really bugs me is the definition of having it all and that somebody else is setting that definition. Yeah. Somebody else is defining for women, you know, in their books and in their television programs and everything else what having it all encompasses. And I just think that that's malarkey. I, it, it, it's not real. And, and uh, if you went and asked the majority of women, if you went and asked the majority of men, say, what is your definition of having it all? You'd probably be surprised by the answers and that men wouldn't, you know, being king of everything isn't having it all. You know, because guess what? When you drop dead of a heart attack at 55, did you really get it all? <laughs> oh, yeah, you got it all. In fairness to men, too, sometimes men do have to make career choices as well that, that, that are based on family versus work. Mm -hmm. You know, perhaps earlier in our careers, uh, you know, we had opportunities to go away. I had opportunities to go away. And we kind of balanced uh, uh, the, the two and the fro, the good and the bad, and ended up staying in Ottawa because everything was kind of here. Our family was here. Our children were young. We wanted them to grow up around the rest of their family as opposed to heading off and seeking other opportunities that career-wise would have been great. But family-wise, there was a question mark. Could have been great, but maybe not. We knew what was good. I agree. Mm -hmm. So then we should stop complaining, saying that there's a glass ceiling. Stop for you know women's groups having to say then yeah. well, we can't get there and I think that's where we're also seeing an argument right there because you've got two very powerful women who have written these books one saying why women can't have it all another woman saying lead in women work and the will to lead and I think this will continue no matter how long mm -hmm. this will always be a she discussion. She flies in private jets too and has housekeepers and <laughs> <laughs> until, until we can find ways to yeah. get them pregnant it's going to oh, be that way. Can you imagine? Oh, right. There is no ceiling by the way it's a sunroof. <laughs> Okay. Yes. Perfect. Thank you so much to our panel. And of course, the new book is coming out. It'll hit bookstores on March the 11th. So for a lot of you, you may be looking for it. Lean in, women work, and will to lead.